It comes with a key. It's keyed up as a six pin practice lock and uh, in this case we have a quick set keyway. These are also available in Schlage keyway. The first step is to remove the key. If uh, you have already rekeyed this once you won't have a working key to work with so you won't have to worry about that step. But you want the keyway at the 12 o'clock position. You want to pull off the retainer which has this little extender on it and to pull it off without losing your springs what you want to do is put your index finger over the top of the pin chamber this is the pin chamber and you want to pull backwards as you keep your finger in place pull it right out from under your finger now you're holding in the top springs with your finger and I'll just slowly lift my finger off and show you. There's the top springs. Those are the things you don't want to lose and that's why you keep your finger in place when you pull off the retainer. Now the next step is easily done. All you do is spill everything out onto your table. Now I've got a towel here because it prevents these things from rolling around and getting lost. Uh, when you dump them out Rotate your plug a little bit as you do so. That will make sure that all of your pins and springs will fall onto the table and uh, you'll have an empty practice lock. You're now ready to start rekeying it. The first thing you want to do is sort out your parts and you've got six of each. You've got six springs, six top pins, and six bottom pins. That's how the lock is shipped. You can key this lock up to be a one pin practice lock if you want. One, two, three, four, five, all the way up to a six pin. And in addition, you can replace these standard top pins with the spool drivers, which we include with the kit. And I'll go into that a little later. What you're looking at here is a standard top pin, just to show you that it has the flat top and the flat bottom. And here you see two kinds of bottom pins. You may have one or the other, or you may have a combination of these. Uh, you see that one is bullet shaped. It has more or less a flat top, and it has a bullet shaped end. The other bottom pin is rounded or chamfered, both on the top and the bottom. And finally, this is a spool driver, or a spool pin. You'll get six of these in your kit and what you do is you replace your standard top pins with spool pins when you want an extra challenge with lock picking because these are used in commercial locks primarily to make the lock pick resistant so you can uh, you can put all six spool pins in your lock in place of the six top pins standard top pins or if you like you can maybe just put three of these spool pins in place of three of the standard top pins so you've got a lot of different combinations you can uh, manufacture okay I'm now ready to rekey my practice lock I've got everything laid out on uh, something that hopefully will let you see it a little easier you start by making sure that you have your plug oriented in a 12 o'clock position. That's so that when you drop your pins in, particularly your bottom pins here, they'll go all the way down into the plug. So what I'm going to do now, turn it sideways to make it easier to see, hopefully. I'm going to drop in the bottom pins one at a time beginning with the first position. Each position or station will receive a bottom pin and I'm just kind of dropping these in in random order that's how we're repinning it make sure you scramble the bottom pins that came out of the original lock so that when you put them back in you don't end up with the same combination you can also use the uh, ten assorted bottom pins that you'll get with your kit these are in addition to the six that are already in the plug so you'll have 16 bottom pins 
And with that many bottom pins, you can create thousands, literally thousands, of different combinations for your practice lock. Um, the idea to repin it is simply to scramble the bottom pins in different combinations so that you have different sizes. That'll give you a different picking challenge every time. So now I've loaded the bottom pins, it's now time to load the top pins. So we just do this same way, one at a time. And because the top pins are all the same length, doesn't matter what order you put them in, they're all going to be the same. Again, kind of wiggle your uh, lock plug, which is what this item is here that accepts the key, that's the plug you'll now find that that will not rotate anymore and that's because your bottom pins have dropped into place your top pins have dropped into place and you'll have to pick it now to get it to turn unless you dump the pins again so now to finish repinning it we do the same thing with the springs we simply put one spring at a time into the lock until it is completely repinned. You'll also notice that the springs do not sit level. That's because your bottom pins are all different lengths and this gives you an idea of what your combination looks like here. Now the last thing we need to do now that the springs are in is to replace the retainer. Now you can do this one of two ways. You can either slide the retainer back on the same way you pulled it, but you're going to have to push down each spring one at a time to do that. It's a little easier if you'll just put the retainer over the top evenly, like this. Make sure that it's on there evenly, because it'll tilt if you don't, uh, if you don't have it even. And push downward with your fingers at the same time until it snaps into place. That's the easy way to put it back on. That's the best way to put it back on. You now have a totally rekeyed practice lock. If you put the key in that used to work, it won't work anymore. You're going to have to pick that lock to get it to turn unless you cheat and take the retainer off and dump the pins. Of course, that's how you will repin it.